Hey guys, welcome back to Kenfolk Farm. It is another hot and humid day here in Georgia. Uh, but the muscadine grapes help ease the pain of all that. <laughs> it's nice to get out here and hunt down these little muscadine grapes. They're finally starting to really, really start taking off. I don't know if y'all can see in there, but they're just getting there. They're starting to take off. But uh, I talked about earlier in the year, things that we have to do uh, to protect our plants when they first start uh, coming on or when they first start growing. Um, we have a lot of pests that we have to deal with. Um, and one of those pests are the Japanese beetles. I talk about those a lot because the Japanese beetles are huge here on our property and they really put a beating on our plants. Uh, but we keep them beat back pretty, pretty well. We do pretty good keeping those guys beat back. But now that the grapes are here and we're eating grapes, uh, the Japanese beetles are about gone, but now we have some other pests that I consider pests. A lot of things like muscadines here in Georgia. Deer, for one, love muscadines. Now, in about three more weeks, we'll be taking care of the deer problem out here because our hunting season starts in about three weeks. But another pest that we have to deal with out here are the raccoons and the possums. They are a huge problem out here when you're growing muscadines because they love an easy meal. They're opportunistic uh, little creatures. They just love muscadines. And with the muscadines that we have, every plant out here is just loaded. And they'll come out here and knock down 20 to eat one. And that's 20 berries, uh, 20 grapes that we didn't get to eat. They're just a huge, huge problem. I've been on this muscadine growers group on Facebook and I've been hearing a lot uh, that people are just getting their vines destroyed with raccoons and possums. So I wanted to do a video today to show what we do to beat back uh, our raccoon, our raccoon and muscadine population. Uh, we trap and we trap a lot. I, I don't talk about it a lot on my videos, uh, but I trap pretty much all year. I keep some traps set whenever I, I try to do what I call preventative maintenance. I try to keep them beat back before they start giving me problems because with us, we raise chickens, quail, ducks, all that's in that one area right there. We have chickens, ducks, and quail all in this one big area right here. I have two pens full of quail, another pen over there, uh, 30 chickens over here, probably that many ducks, lots of birds over here. And if, if a raccoon comes in here and gets in our pen, uh, they're just, they could devastate your bird population. But now that we have the muscadines going, that's just another welcome mat for the pests to come over here. And, and aggravate us even more. So what we're gonna to do today is just set some traps, do some preventive maintenance, and try to just beat back a few of these guys. There's enough muscadines in the woods to keep those guys in the woods if you can keep the population under control. When they start getting a little out of control, they're just looking for food, so they spread out uh, and trying to find an easy meal, which this is a huge easy meal for them. So stick around, we're gonna go make some bait. I'll show you guys what bait I make uh, to catch these guys, and then we'll set a few traps and see if we don't get lucky. Okay, our bait is really, really simple. It's basically just dry dog food, uh, a pack of tuna fish, just a little pack of tuna fish, and our leftover bacon grease. There is nothing that can resist tuna fish and bacon grease. And the dog food is just basically uh, something they can feel and pick up and actually eat. I'll show you that here in just a minute. <laughs> I got these two guys out here with me, Mia and Odin. And ever since I made my bait, they have been hovering everywhere, <laughs> smelling tuna fish, dog food, and bacon grease. So I gotta make sure that they stay out of the traps as well. Now we're using traps that are, are not harmful to, to any animals outside of a possum or a raccoon. Uh, for the fact I got these guys wandering around all over the place and we also have a couple of, of cats that run around that I don't want to get trapped up. 
So what we're using is we're using the all famous cage trap that everybody's seen a thousand times. It works flawlessly. We've always had good luck with this thing. Uh, and we're also using the coon cuffs. Any of you guys have never seen these, uh, it's called a coon cuff. It's basically for uh, any, type, any type of animal that has sort of like human type hands with a thumb, raccoons, possums, basically. Uh, super simple trap to use. I love these things. Uh, easy to set. Um, just a great trap. Uh, they stick their arm in. They feed out of the out of the little tube, and once they hit the trigger in there, they pull on the trigger. It releases the trap and holds them until we can get over to them the next day. But uh, we're going to use three. I just got three coon cuffs and a cage trap. Uh, my plan is right now is there's our chicken pen, and there's the muscadines where I was just standing. We have this fence right here that goes all the way around this whole block where our ducks are at. And it's a, it's this type of fence that the raccoons and possums really can't get in, get through, but they can climb over it, but they never do. What they do is they like to walk right along the fence line from the woods here, because the woods are all out here. These are all the woods that they, that we're trapping from. They come from here and come to my muscadines. But we're gonna sit right on this corner. I've caught so many right here, it's ridiculous, but they, they like to walk down this fence or just come out of these woods. And something about these corners, they just love coming through these. I guess kind of like a mouse or a rat or something. I consider them wood rats anyway. So it really works well right here on this corner. So we're going to set one here, and then we'll just walk down the property. I have a little dirt road that runs out here, and we'll just set a few going down the dirt road and see how many we can clean up out of these woods right here. I like to put a little right at the front of the trap as well. All right, well, this next spot, we are right at our little hunting location where we do all our deer hunting. Our tree stand's right there, and our feeder's right there. So I know there's a lot of raccoons coming over here. We're gonna set a trap right on this tree uh, just to help thin these guys down a little bit. Our muscadines are right there, so we basically did a half circle around this lower side of our muscadines. We'll trap it for a couple weeks and then work our way to the upper part of the property and thin out uh, raccoons and possums up there because we have our other vineyard uh, up on top of the hill here. So this is going to be a great spot. I'll show you guys how we set these coon traps. Really, really simple. All right, guys, you can take your, your traps and anchor them any way you like. Uh, I like to just run a wire around a good solid tree. That keeps them from running off with your trap. Uh, but these things are really, really simple. There's a, a trigger system inside that goes on the outside. It's got a little notch there that hooks to this dog leg. I'll show you guys. You just you can see as it, when the trap's set, it's like that, and when it, when they when they fire the trap, it closes on the arm like so. So what you do is you just close that, and grab that dog leg, and hold it down, and put it in that little notch like so, and it is set. Really, really simple. You can see how it sort of notches right inside there, and then when they reach in to pull it, it pulls this down, which closes the trap on the arm of the animal holding him till you can get to him the next day. And here in Georgia, you have to check your traps every 24 hours. It's an ethical thing to do. So we do that. We check, I'll, I'll check mine as soon as I wake up in the morning. But uh, super simple, I got it set. Let me tie it to the tree and we'll bait it up.
Come. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Guys, super simple. We set four traps in probably 15 minutes, if that. It doesn't take but a second. We'll check these things first thing in the morning and see what we got. And if we don't have anything, we will probably leave them probably the week. Just leave them for the whole week. Keep those guys running for about a week. And hopefully we get a few raccoons and possums just to keep them from staying all in our muscadines and eating all our grapes. Those are our grapes. I didn't grow them for the animals. I grew them for me. So stick around. We'll see what happens in the morning. Well, it's day one. Let's go out here and see what we got. It is already starting out to be a scorcher. It is so hot. I'm just so done with summer. Leave me a comment below. Let me know <laughs> how you guys feel about this summertime. My gosh, it's been hot. It's been a good wet summer, though. We've had lots of rain, so that's been really, really good. Let's go down here to our first trap and see how we come out. All right, we're coming up here to the corner, and we have nothing. We don't have anything. Our bait's still there, full of ants, but it ought to be smelling good. Let's go down and check these other traps. We'll walk down this dirt road down here. All right. When we come down here to the second trap, we just got a little dirt road that runs uh, right back behind our little guest house there. Nothing. Nothing in that trap. Nothing in that trap. The ants are loving it. Check trap number two. It looks empty as well. No ants on that one. I see it. Got it tied to that little tree there. Now we're going to check the last one. As you see where it opens up to our driveway and all down here, this is where we hunt. All right. Down here at the tree. Nothing. Well, that was a dull night there. Nothing. All right. Well, we'll let it sit. We'll let that sit. Like I say, we'll trap all week. That's a pretty good thing. Thanks, Odin. <laughs> we'll sit, uh, leave them traps all week. Come. Let's go. Hey, come, 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 come. Odin, come. Let's go. Odin. Thank you. We'll let them sit for the rest of the week. And hopefully pull us some little animals out of there sometime this week. Well, it's day number two, guys. Thanks for sticking around this video. Armadillo holes all over the place. It is so hot in Georgia. I know I keep complaining about it, but it is ridiculous. I've done nothing but just feed the animals. And I'm soaked in sweat. It's just to the point where you don't even want to go outside. You can't get motivated to do anything. The second you open the door... That heat just hits you. I'm just done with it. I heard today it was like 104 in Mississippi. Just crazy out here. I'm done with summer. We're at trap number one. Nothing again. Nothing again. No ants this time. I'm sure they cleaned out all the moisture out of there as far as bacon grease and tuna fish. Should have brought more with me tomorrow. I think tomorrow we'll reload it with some more bait. All right, we're just going to walk down the road and get this over with with the quickness. I got to get ready for work and it is hot. Trap number two. Nothing. Most of my bait's gone. I need to reload that. Uh, I think due, due to the ants. That one was absolutely loaded with ants yesterday. We'll keep trucking down the road here. So hopefully all they come up, all of them come up empty, be honest. It would be even better if they came up empty for the fact that lets me know that we keeping them beat back. Trap number three, we're keeping them beat back. So that, that's actually what I want. I really don't want to have to get out here and deal with them today. This is the one that concerns me the most uh, for the fact there's a feeder out here. When you got raccoons, they're eating all your corn too. That's just one more thing I'm out here feeding 
I'd rather be feeding my deer. Look how pretty it is right here. This is where we're hunting. You can see my little tree stand right there. And we got all these woods beside us. I just love this area. It's real open in there. Just beautiful. Jessica got her a nice deer right here last year. And that's our driveway that runs right down through there. And we can actually shoot all the way down the driveway. It's like 200 yards maybe. Really, really pretty. We'll keep the camera rolling to check trap number four. I believe if we had something in it, the dogs would have done spotted it. And we don't. All right, day two. Nothing. All right, we are on, I believe, day three. The cage trap, I've already bypassed it. I wasn't gonna video any of this if I didn't catch anything. Uh, Mia, come back, Mia. Come, come, come. Uh, the first trap didn't have anything. Second trap, we got one. We have us a little possum. He's over here chilling out, waiting to see what's going to happen next. So we're going to go ahead and take care of this guy. Uh, go check the next two traps and see if they got anything. I'm going to keep re I'm going to keep running these things for the next week or so, and then I will eventually move them uh, to the upper part of the property and try to weed some of these uh, little critters back. Uh, just because we don't need them getting in the chicken pen. I don't want them getting in my muscadines and uh, knocking all my, my grapes down before we have a chance to eat them. And my chicken pens and all are right there. And you guys that raise chickens, ducks, quail, all those birds, you know, these little jokers are devastating to your chickens. And they don't get in just eat one. They go in and kill them all. But you guys that don't raise chickens uh, don't understand. When they get in a pen, for some reason, they won't just get one chicken and leave. Uh, they kill them all or kill as many as they, they possibly can. It's the craziest thing ever. So they can really devastate your chicken, uh, your chickens and ducks and stuff. So it's, I think this is what we should be doing to thin these guys down. Just sort of beat them back a little bit. And, uh, because if they get too overpopulated out here in the woods, they do spread out and try to look for those easier meals, which is definitely our chicken pen and our muscadines. So let's take care of this guy. I got to get the dogs back. Come, come, come. Hey, y'all come back. I get worried. They're going to get out there and get bit by a snake. There's a creek down there. Mia, let's go check the next two traps. All right, we're here at trap number three. Nothing. Nothing there. Let's go check this last trap one. See if we can't close this thing out. All right, well guys, our chicken pen and duck pen is all right there. We just made one uh, loop all the way around the woods. There's a dirt road that runs back here. We can come out down there by the deer feeder, check trap there, come up. And uh, for you guys that don't know, I have two more quail pens right here. And the, the one on the furthest end, y'all can't see, sitting right beside this one's uh, full of about 40 quail. And it's set, they just sit right here on the edge of the woods. So at night, a possum, raccoon, uh, anything can easily come in here, climb that fence and tear into these pens. And so it's, I think it's our job to keep these guys beat back. I really do a lot of trapping. I don't tell you guys a lot about it. Uh, I just don't do a lot of videos on it. It's just one of those things we do a lot of out here. But uh, we just don't talk about it a lot. It's one of those controversial subjects. A lot of people don't care much for trapping. But I do. I think it's a great tool to keep uh, these animals beat back. I'm not trying to, to get rid of all of them. I just try to keep them beat back where I don't have any problems with them coming over here and messing with my birds. And now that the muscadine grapes are here, I don't want to mess with my grapes either. So uh, we just keep them beat back. To me, uh, they're just a rat. And they will come and dig under your pen. And we have foxes and coyotes. Not coyotes. I never have no problem with coyotes. But we do have foxes that will come and dig a hole under our pen. And I've never, I have yet to catch a fox. I'm not good at catching foxes and coyotes. But maybe one day... But uh, we do have foxes that will occasionally get in here. We had a big problem with the fox uh, this past spring picking off our meat chickens. So really, really big problem. Just having all these woods around us. We're sitting in the middle of a ton of acreage all the way around us. Our property's right in the middle of all this other property all the way around us. It's like we're dead sitting like in a donut. But anyway, love you guys to death. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Uh, if you like these type of videos, let me know in the comment section below. I'll keep these videos coming occasionally. Uh, if 
you guys trap, let me know uh, some methods that you guys use for trapping. Because there's a lot of people out there that trap and don't, like, don't care to talk about it much. But do me a favor, click that subscribe button, hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And we will see y'all on the next video.